class, my name is Dr. Chambers, and I'm here at the University of Central Florida in our Soil Science Research Lab. As you can see, we're studying soil and all the amazing components of soil. Now you might think to yourself, dirt? Really? Is that that interesting? Well, when I talk about soils, I'm not actually talking about the kind of dirt that you sweep up on the floor and your mom gets mad that you tracked into the house. I'm talking about soil. And soil is alive. As you can see here, soil is what supports our plants. It's full of all kinds of critters and it even has different layers that you can see through these different colors in the core. Now today we have an exciting thing planned for you because we're going to teach you all about the world of soils. I have the UCF Wetlands Club here with me today to teach you guys about the amazing world of soils. And if you're not excited about soils yet, think about all the things that live in there. Things like bugs. So let's talk a little bit more about what soil is made of. Now you've heard in class about the three phases of matter. Can you remember what those three phases are? Hmm, let's think about that. Well, one phase is solids. And solids, well, they're, they're solid. The second phase of matter is liquids. Remember that a liquid takes the shape of its container. And the third phase of matter, well, the third phase of matter is gas. Now, all three of these phases of matter can be found in soil. Can you think about what types of solids, liquids, and gases you might find in soil? So let's start by reviewing the solid components of soil. There's actually two solid forms in soil. The first one we're gonna talk about is rocks and minerals. You guys have been talking about this in class. Rocks and minerals are part of the Earth's crust that have broken down. Now rocks usually break off and start off as a rough, lumpy piece. But over time, the wind, the water, plants, they interact with these rocks and they break off little bitty chunks. For example, we can look at this rock from the river that's been shaped and eroded by water. Those little parts that break off, well, they become part of the soil. And the texture may differ based on the rock. All of you from Florida are very familiar with sand. This is the roughest texture of rocks and minerals that we find in the soil. But they're softer ones too. We can also look at clay. You may be familiar with clay from your art classes, from molding. Clay is also a type of rock and mineral that's found in our soil. Now, the second type of solid material that we find in the soil is what we call organics. Organics can be anything that is currently alive or used to be alive. So when we look at this soil core, the organic material includes our plants, as well as all the roots that extend down within the soil. We also have some of that dead material like leaves and branches that fall on the soil surface. Now, if we wanna look at what that happens to that material over time, I'm gonna need a glove for that. Because over time, our, our organic material becomes dark and mucky, kinda like this. Moving on to the final two phases of matter that we find in soil, liquids and gases. Now, the liquids in soil are made up of mostly water. Plants need water in order to grow. Otherwise, they're gonna wilt and die. We also have the gas of various forms of air in the soil. And you can see this when I turn on this gas cylinder here and start to see these bubbles coming up in our water. All those organisms that live in the soil, whether it's moles, insects, or even microorganisms we can't see, they all require air in order to breathe. So let's review our three phases of matter that we find in soil. We have solids made up of rocks and minerals, as well as organic matter. We have liquids 
made up of water, and we have gases made up of air. And now we get to head out in the field and see some soils for ourselves. Let's meet up with my good friend, Sarah, who's also a soil scientist. Hi, Sarah. Thanks, Dr. Chambers, for that really awesome lesson on solids, liquids, and gases that you can find in the soil. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah, and today I'm in a wetland to teach you all about soil and the plants that it supports. Plants are green, and they make their own energy, and they support the bottom of the food web. There are a lot of plants, or a lot of animals, that eat the plants, and then there are animals that eat the animals that eat the plants. Without soil, we wouldn't have the basis of the food web, and therefore, no ecosystem. There are three traits that characterize all wetlands. Soil, water, and plants. Check out these wetlands. This is a swamp. I'm in a marsh. This is a pond. Time for my favorite part of the job, getting in depth and taking a soil sample. Oh man, soil science sure is hard work. Oh, hi Sarah. Hey, it's my friend and fellow soil scientist Paul. What are you doing here? Oh, I just found these cool upland and wetland soils. Whoa, no way! Let me see them. Do you think you can tell which one is which? You know, I don't think I'm sure. Do you want to enlist our new friends to help? Yeah, they'll know. Okay, they're really smart, I bet. So I have two soil samples. One of them, in my left hand, is really soft and watery and squishy. Really good, holds its shape. While in my right hand, it's more gray, sandy, very, very dry. Which one do you think came from a wetland? The left? Or the right? Paul, you want to help us out? Sure. I bet it's the left one. I think I'm right. I think so too. Oh, cool. You know what? I think you should bring these soil samples back to the lab and investigate them further. I'll do just that. Great. See you later, Paul. Good luck. Oh. Sarah was right. Soil science is hard work. Australian. <laughs> hey Taylor. Hey Irion. Hey Paul. Hey, what are Paul. you guys doing? This is our wetland in a pan. Do you want to come check it out? Yeah. This is our wetland in a pan. It shows us how wetlands function as a filter, absorbing waste and holding water from our environment. The brown side represents land, where we live. The blue side represents a body of water, such as the ocean or a lake. The part in the middle is our wetland. You can see that the wetlands are home to many different kinds of plants and animals. Here is an alligator, my favorite. Let's start our demonstration with the wetland removed from the pan. Now, let's imagine a huge storm blows in and rains over the land. What do you think will happen to the water? Great thinking. The water from the rainstorm is going to go right from the land into the body of water. Now let's see what happens when we put our wetland back and a huge storm blows through once again. What do you think will happen this time? Amazing! We can see that this time, instead of going right into our body of water, the wetland absorbs the rain. We call the water that comes from land and runs off into other bodies of water, runoff. Sometimes the runoff can be from harmful things such as oil from cars. 
Let's see what happens to our body of water with and without our wetland when the runoff is polluted. Let's start with our wetland outside of the pan. What do you think will happen to our body of water as we pour this down our land? That's right. We can see our body of water being polluted by the mucky runoff. What about when we bring our wetland back into the pan? Amazing! We can see that our wetland absorbs this polluted water, preventing it from getting into our water over here. That never ceases to amaze. Thank you for letting us demonstrate. Wow! Whoa. That was cool! Right? And we could also see that removal of wetlands not only removes the habitat for many lovely plants and animals, it is actually removing protection of waterways from pollution. Huh. Well, thanks guys for showing me that. I need to take these soil samples back to the lab. Bye! Bye! Bye. some soil samples from the field. A soil sample? Thanks! Yeah! Oh, perfect! Thank cool. you! Bye, Anthony! Good luck with those! Bye, Paul! Have a great day! Soil science involves a lot of colors. Soils come in many different colors. Sometimes we mix ingredients with the soil to make new colors. What's your favorite color? Today, we're going to make some new colors with mixing some new ingredients. Look at these cool colors. These colors tell us a lot about the soil. Come look at this. We have machines that measure the soil too. Isn't soil science neat? I hope you appreciate, next time you go outside, the amazing world of soil beneath your feet, as well as the wetlands that you see around you. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.